A reading from our Holy Gospel. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every time we have a miracle in our lectionary, I have to point out that miracles are epiphanies. And epiphanies are to point the way to Christ. There's, there's the epiphany season, but it's not really just a season. We see it over and over and over again. But a lot of times, our scope really limits into the miracle. And we're, at, we're not able to see the, the uh, peripherals. We're not able to see the bigger picture. We have an example right here. Simon Peter, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, they all went to fish, and they fished all day and all night. And when they had finished fishing, they began to wash their nets. Now that's really important. Because why would one wash their nets? It's the end of the day. They have clocked out. They're washing their nets to prepare for the next day. So when Jesus comes along and he tells them to put out into the deep and let down, let down your nets for a catch, I don't think that they really expected much to happen because they, weren't really, they re didn't really understand who Jesus was at that point. And if it were me, after I finished cleaning the nets and I was done for the day, I would be kind of sore at someone saying, cast out your nets, the ones that we just watched. But they did as Jesus said. And here is a miracle, perhaps not the miracle in our text. They put out into the deep, they threw out their nets, they brought in fish, they began to sink, they brought in an another boat, they, they filled up that boat, the nets began to break, and right there, business is booming. Right there, they had the greatest day vocationally, that you could have. So many fish that they couldn't eat them all, probably couldn't sell them all in time either. And so we look at this and we say, well, that is a miracle that they were able to catch so many fish and able to put it into their boats. And many pastors will preach that this is provision. God is providing for his people through these fish. But, they, but it's not that. Because there is one thing in here that tells us that it is not provisions. It is not to be sold. It is not to be eaten. And it's this. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. Now that is very important. However, there is another miracle in here that we see in Simon Peter. He saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. They got it, they knew who he was at that point. The epiphany pointed to Christ and they, and Christ assigned them apostleship. And yet, of the first apostles, they say, flee from me, O Lord, for I am a man of unclean lips. I am a sinful man. I am one who does not deserve to be in your presence. You know what? He's right. But also, when we look at the Old Testament, in, in particular the Israelites, when the, uh, the the cloud of smoke by day and the and the or excuse me, pillar of smoke by day and the pillar of fire by night. They would follow that, and yet they also brought the Ark of the Covenant along with them. And anyone who was in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant was in awe. They were afraid because God is sovereign. God is all powerful, all knowing. 
Is he, he is the God of God, Lord of Lords, very God of very God. And so when they approached God, they were afraid. Just as a high priest would wear bells around his vestments, so that if he looked upon God or touched the ark, he would die, and they could just pull him in, pull him out with the rope. Because no one else is going to want to go in there. So we have the sovereignty of God, we have the majesty of God, and these Israelites would, knew this well, excuse me, knew this well, so well that they were afraid of God. To, to the point, to the point where they followed Yom Kippur. That one day they were able to go and sacrifice for the forgiveness of all of their sins. Now I ask this. Are we afraid in the presence of God? I mean, we should be. We're, we're sinful. And we have our works. Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word I will let down the nets. We should be terrified by the presence of God. We should be in awe of the presence of God. And to a certain degree, we are. But here's the thing. We have the presence of God, not only in the Father, but also in the Son and also in the Holy Spirit. Therefore, when we're in the presence of God, we're in the presence of Christ. And now, not only are we standing in awe, but God Himself feeds us on Himself. And when He feeds us on Himself, we have access to God like no one ever has. The Old Testament, they never had the, the presence like this. Until our Lord instituted the Lord's Supper, no one had. And now we get to eat God and drink, drink His blood? That's presence. That's true presence. Jesus Christ is here. We make, we make no doubt about that. And so when we come in the presence of God and we say to God, Lord, away from me for I'm a man of unclean lips or a sinner or anything that we have done against God Himself, Christ grabs us and He says, No! You are unworthy to be in my presence, but I, may, I am allowing you anyway. I'm pulling you into me anyway. I will feed you my body, and I will, feed, drink, I will give you my blood to drink. And in that, we have peace and presence. And at the end of the day, after we have eaten, after we have drank, after we have remembered our baptism, we are told this, and when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen.